So what are some of the best sounding speakers I've ever heard? I get this question a lot, perhaps due to my reputation of being very thorough at the trade shows. After years of listening to hundreds of speakers all around the world, I now feel confident answering this question. This is something I wouldn't be able to say five years ago, but I've put in my 10,000 plus hours of critical listening, and now I have a better idea of what's out there. Let's get to it. We're shaking, it's audio bacon. When you're listening to a system at a show or even a private listening room, you don't know exactly how each component sounds like, but in my opinion, a good part of what you're listening to is the capabilities of the loudspeaker. This includes imaging, tonal density, texture, quality of the crossover, and other things. As you hear some of these speakers with different electronics and in different rooms, you start to get a feel for their personality and performance characteristics. Many of these companies like to voice their speakers in a certain way, and you start to hear consistencies regardless of the electronics used or even the type of listening room. Now obviously, the best speaker will be different for everyone, but the best speakers for me would be of a natural and organic sound. I listen to a lot of vocal recordings, so I need to hear the soul, the drums need to have authority and skin flex, and trumpets and saxophone have to have this golden texture to them. When I refer to a component having accuracy, and artistic intent, these are the qualities I'm looking for. I remember going down Frenchman Street in New Orleans and just soaking up all the live jazz there. Unfortunately, most of the hi-fi systems I've heard, brass never really get close to what they actually sound like in person. Now your definition of accuracy could be something else. I know some audiophiles enjoy a more transparent and resolving sound, while others are moved by a more liquid, gray, and dense sound. To some, the best speakers would be neutral and measure well. But to me, something that sounds neutral doesn't sound accurate simply because the real world is filled with color. In fact, it's anything but neutral. And there's nothing more accurate than the real world, right? The interesting thing is some of these audiophiles realize it's not realistic, but they just enjoy their music that way. And that's totally fine. It sounds odd, but believe it or not, not every audiophile is seeking a natural and real sound. I enjoy a warmer sound because humans are warm-blooded and that's how they're supposed to sound. Anyway, that's just my philosophy when it comes to hi-fi, so just keep that in mind as I give you my thoughts on what I believe are the best speakers in the world today. It's okay if you disagree, this is just one audiophile's opinion. Over the years, when I think about natural sounding speakers, these were the usual suspects. The Wilson Audio Alexia 2s, the Wilson Banesh Eminence, Mer Audio SP1 Electrostatics, the Devor Fidelity Orangutan, Living Voice Vox Palladium, and the Legacy Audio Valor. The large MBL extremes at Munich were also pretty incredible. But the absolute best speaker system I've ever heard was in Munich, and that was the Airy Surratt system. When I gave it best of show at Munich 2019, I had no clue the system was over a million dollars at the time. Mostly because their booth wasn't located with the other million dollar systems. But it was the most humanistic sound system I've heard so far. Now with each of these aforementioned speakers, they all sound natural and real, but in different ways. One of the audiophile adages is you can't have it all. There are always trade-offs and you'll have to weigh what's more important to you. Some from a smoothness and density perspective and others from a resolution and tonal perspective. Not to mention the bigger speakers will make Ariana Grande seem like she's eight feet tall. So a speaker system could sound tonally natural but is unrealistically scaled you have to figure out what works for you. However, the problem that many audiophiles face is having a large enough room for these speakers. To sound their best, many of them need more room to breathe. So even if you could afford the speakers, you might not have adequate space for it. You can't always choose where you live. As for me, I don't have a lot of room to put these enormous speakers, so the best sounding ones always felt a bit out of reach. But a few years ago, I discovered a speaker company that changed everything and that's Gershman Acoustics. Hey guys, I'm an idiot. It's actually pronounced Gershman Acoustics, not Gershman Acoustics, so please keep that in mind for the rest of the video. A company that has been designing speakers for over 26 years. Now, the most prestigious and rarest award on Audio Bacon is the best of show. Unlike other publications, I only give one of these at each show. 
Somehow, Jerusalem Acoustic was able to do the impossible and win two of these in a row at Expona 2018 and 2019, beating out all the half million dollar plus systems at the shows. In 2018, they were debuting their $130,000 Posh speaker at Expona. It was the first time most of the people in the States could actually hear it. Having gone through probably 100 rooms that day, I was exhausted. But when I entered their tiny room, I saw this very interesting looking speaker. It looked like an ad hoc engineers type of speaker. It didn't look lavish or extravagant, but it had this very serious business vibe to it. Till this day, these speakers had some of the best imaging I've ever heard at any price point. In addition to checking all the audiophile boxes, these speakers had an element that is lacking in most other high-end speakers. And that's physicality, especially when it came to the low end. All percussions had this very true to life and believable force. When a cymbal or kick drum was struck, there was a heft and gravity to the sound. It's a sound filled with texture and material that you could actually feel. I mean, I didn't want to leave my seat and I kept requesting more music. In 2019, Gershman Acoustic announced an update to their Grand Avant-Garde loudspeaker. I went into the listening room with our guest reviewer, Siu Jer. I'll include an interview with Ofa Gershman at the end of this video. So we're sitting there and we're listening and the goosebumps are instantly forced out of us. These speakers may look tiny, but they project a relatively huge but naturally sized soundstage. Not only that, every piece of the music encompasses true timbre and tone. It never sounds sterile or constrained. And more importantly, the music had shape. There was a mold and eerie presence to the performers in every track. Honestly, I couldn't pick out any problems with what I was hearing simply because it reminded me of what I hear in the real world. The fabric of the music is just fully intact and faithfully represented. It was obvious these speakers were designed with a different approach from the others. This is partially due to the unique bass trap design at the bottom of the speakers. And the price? $15,000 US. Given the fact they're smaller, cheaper, and sounded better than most of these six-figure plus systems, in my opinion, the Grand Avant-Garde instantly became one of Hi-Fi's best kept secrets. After the demo, it was apparent the Jershmans live for music. So I had to ask Ellie and Ofra, how often do you listen to live music? They replied, every weekend. Which made sense why it sounded so accurate, but until this year, I was under the impression they were voicing their speakers from memories of attending live performances. Well, it turns out they're able to listen to live music every weekend because they actually voiced their speakers with actual musicians, vocalists, and instruments in their studio. They place the performer in the recording space, play back the recording, and tune their speakers to match. They also perform listening tests in different acoustic environments, including the homes of other audiophiles. The lengths they went to to design these speakers is incredible. If you think about it, that's the best, but probably not the most practical approach to speaker design. It takes more work than most would be willing to put in. And as far as I know, Jerushman Acoustic is the only ones doing it at this level of commitment. The proof is in the listening, and in my opinion, all their hard work is paying off in spades. Again, these speakers won Best of Show for 2019 and sounded so good that Siu actually ended up buying them soon after. It's been over a year since I've heard them, but we were able to hang out and listen to the system last week. I was able to reaffirm how tactile and genre independent these speakers were. They had this wonderful warmth and density to the sound. Piano, guitars, woodwinds all had this beautiful sense of presence and air. Vocal performances were meaty and organic. There was just this weight and amazing sense of realism across all the recordings. These speakers also go very low, especially for its size, and better than some larger and more expensive speakers I've heard. Personally, I feel I could still integrate a sub for more oomph, but 99% of people will be completely happy with its low-end performance, especially for its smaller footprint. Other than that, I honestly don't have anything negative to say about these speakers. I don't think the Jerushman Acoustic Grand Avant-Garde is just a great value, but has the potential to be the in-game speaker for many audiophiles. It is a true giant killer. It sounds great in both large and small spaces, so you no longer have to own a $5 million mansion to enjoy one of the best sounding speakers in the world. 
So after years of searching for the perfect speaker, I think I've found it. Especially after realizing how the design of the speaker aligns so well with how music should be reproduced. Anyway, I put my money where my mouth is. So I'm now in the process of purchasing a Gershwin Acoustic Grand Avant Garde for myself. These are absolutely the best sounding speakers for me and my listening space. What were some of the best sounding speakers you've ever heard? I wanna know, let me know in the comments below. If you ever get a chance to listen to the Gershwin Acoustics at a trade show, I would totally encourage it. It's truly one of the best sounding speakers in the world today. Now here's the interview we did with Ofer Gershman at Exponent 2019. As always, subscribe and like for the algo, and I'll fry up the next one. Hi, I'm Ofer Gershman from Gershman Acoustics, uh, and we're here at Expona. It's room 710. Uh, what we have here is our grand avant-garde speakers. Um, these are based on a speaker called Avant-Garde that we've start manufacturing about 20 some years ago uh, and it's been updated a few times but this is the latest update to it uh, what we've done here is not only we've uh, change the uh, drivers, especially the woofers. It's a different woofer all together now. Uh, it's um, aluminum woofer, double magnet, and has a very big surround. So it allows the woofer to move a lot and push a lot of hair. Uh, also, what we've done is we've came out with this idea that we have a bass trap at the bottom of the speaker. Um, the speaker, the enclosure has dots at the bottom of it, and so the back wave goes through the, hit the back of the speaker enclosure, and instead of going back through the woofer cone, it goes down to the bass trap and it dissipates. It doesn't have the energy to come up and cause any kind of, of distortion to the sound or, uh, so that helps our clarity, it helps imaging, it allows the bass to go lower and tighter. Um, and so we, what we've done here is, uh, if you see it's up to me and I'm, I'm kind of short, it's a small speaker, it's only 36 inches tall, but it fills out the room incredibly and um, goes down very, very low, uh, some rooms even to 20 hertz. Um, now what we've done too is we've uh, added some options, which is if somebody want um, wood with a lacquer finish we have those grills and if you see that's the in inner side of it um, that a lot gives you a look of a, of a wood finish but it also helps protect it from little kids and from your pets that usually kind of you know scratch the screens. It's incredible. Um, we have a lot of places where there's small rooms, uh, they still want full range and they get that. Or we have it in room that actually on the Montreal show, we played it in a room that's 60 foot long. Huge, huge, and it filled it out incredibly well. Uh, we have it at the VPI house. It's a very big room, uh, filled it out like crazy. Um, so it's an incredible speaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah. And we and you can play any type of music with it. Um, and I mean, even if you use a 50 uh, watt uh, amplifier, um, you know, it'll work really well. Uh, depends on, on how loud you want it and how big is your room. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, enjoy it. Did, did you want to tell us a little bit more about what's connected? Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. So we're partnered with VAC mm -hmm. Amplifiers, and um, it's one of their best here. It's I think it's $63,000 uh, mm -hmm. and VAC preamp. Uh, we also have the uh, VPI Turntable Avenger we love. It's one of my very best. Uh, we have the um, Oracle CD player. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, it's the Nordust cables, which we use a lot. It's all connected with Nordust. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. You're very <laughs> welcome. Thank you for coming.